السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما انفعنا وزدنا علما وصلي الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك وعليك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him and we ask His help and we seek His forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil inside us and from the evil consequences of our bad actions. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, no one can guide. I testified that the reason you get to be worshipped by Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. He was, as you know, the most knowledgeable about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sleep, and it does not befit His Majesty that He sleeps. He lowers the scales and raises them. The deeds of the day will be resurrected to him before the deeds of the night. And the deeds of the night will be resurrected to him before the deeds of the day. His veil is light. If he were to remove his veil, the light that comes from the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will burn over the creation. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we'll continue our series about the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such a blessed night. You know, every time you get together and just talk about the, the, the seerah of the best person who ever walked on earth. The best of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. But before we talk, I just wanted to say that inshallah we won't go over 30 minutes. I know it's getting late. And the other thing also, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, bless these brothers who come from Indiana, PA, trying to get the, your help. You know, I've been actually in Indiana a few times when I came to this country and, uh, you know, uh, for the last few years, the number of the Muslims there have been increasing. And uh, they are, yes, they are in need of a uh, place, a place to build like a strong Muslim community there. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, save them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them in this cause, insha'Allah. Allahumma ameen. Last time we talked about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lineage, and we talked about the, the upbringing of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his right narcissus. And today, inshallah, we're going to talk about the death of his mother, the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's mother, and then his living under the care of his grandfather and his uncle. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his mother, Amina bint Tuah, died, and died also when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was six years old. And she died when she was coming back from, Mecca, from, from Medina, visiting her, uh, visiting her uncles from Banu Adi ibn Najjar tribe. And the purpose of the visit was to show them the, mas the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she died in a place right in between Mecca in Medina, and once she died, it was Abdul Muttalib, he became the guardian of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He became the caretaker of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Abdul Muttalib, he loved the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a great deal, and he actually favored him over some of his children. He favored the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over some of his own children. And uh, just one of the examples to show you the love of Abdul Muttalib to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They said that Abdul Muttalib sent the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam once to search out for uh, for stray camels, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he uh, he didn't come home and it was late and then Abdul Muttalib started to worry and then he came out and 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 uh, he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he hugged him and he said, "Oh my son." I was just like a woman waiting for her little child. And he said, you know, I will never, he said that to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi I will never leave you alone anymore. You will never leave my side anymore. 
when Abdul Muttalib died, and he died after two years of his guardianship, in his deathbed, he talked to one of his children, Abu Talib, to take care of the Messenger of Allah to be the caretaker of the Messenger of Allah And also Abu Talib loved the Messenger of Allah so much. Just imagine this, all these calamities that the Prophet Muhammad is facing, and he's just like eight years old. You know, he didn't have this, this compassion, he didn't, have, he didn't experience this mercy and love, you know, the affection, the feelings that everybody gets from his parents. He didn't see his father, and then his mother died when he was six years old, and then the man who loved him the most after his mother, Abdul Muttalib, died two years later, and now Abu Talib. You know, it, just imagine all these calamities and all these hardships that the Prophet Muhammad had to go through since he was a little child. Since he was a little child. Just think about that, really. Just think about that. Think about all the things that the Prophet Muhammad had to go through. And when you, when you are in a, in a, in a, in a tribulation, when, you, when you're having some hard times, just think about the message of Allah. Think about all the things that the message of Allah had to go through. Just think about that. You know, he, his mother died when he was a child. You know, when he, even he, he, when he became a prophet, his, his, his dignity and honor put into questions. You know, his, 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 uh, his uh, companions were killed. He was driven out of his, of his hometown. You know, his uncle was, was killed and his body was destroyed. Just think about all this. You know, think about all these tasks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Because sometimes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicts one of us, ah, it's enough, I cannot take it any longer. That's way too much, up to my neck. Let me tell you something. Allah will never give you something that you cannot take. That's the bottom line. Allah will never give you anything that you cannot take. So saying, ah, I cannot take it any longer, well, guess what, he can. And when you can't, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stop. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not afflict you anymore. Because He doesn't want you to be completely wasted. You know? And know that the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests are the, the most favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this man came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Rasulullah, who is the most tested among people? Who is the most tested among people? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu didn't say, you know, the sinners or this and that. He said the prophets and the messengers. The prophets and the messengers. And then he said, and then the next best. And then the next best. And then he said, you tell a rajul ala qadri dini, that the man will be afflicted according to the degree of his faith. The strong the faith is, the strong the calamity will be. You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes he afflicts us with, with, with something bad to see our reaction. You know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a hard time, sometimes you just want to elevate your state. That's it, that's, that's it. You just want to elevate your state. So it's always good. You know, like they say in a hood, it's all good. It's, it's always good. You know, if, if you know, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ mu'min." I just wonder to the affair of the Muslim, you know, if the Muslim, all his affairs are, are good. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he's in a state of well-being, he says, Alhamdulillah, it's good for him. And if he's afflicted with something, he's patient. He also says, Alhamdulillah, and it's good for him. So everything is good for you, right? So just think about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicts you with something, just think about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You know, and this hardship, this hardship actually helped the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be sensitive, to be sensitive to, to the pain of people. I mean, somebody who lost his parents, somebody who had to go through all this, definitely he'll be sensitive to people's pain, you know. Um, so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi was brought up as, as an orphan. And I just want to go around the room and ask the question, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be an orphan? So what you would say in all my father or all my mother, just say all my Lord. Yes. Something he depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright. So he will depend on nobody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody will have influence on him but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? Want to say something? 
Ah, io. Ah, io, ok. <ride> certo. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Preparing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to um, To have a high level of determinations If he is, if he's like uh, As he said, he had to go through all these things in the future So okay, developed a high level of determination hmm. Brother Salim, you want to say something? You look like you're thinking about something. Go ahead. Spit it out. Hmm. Well, that's enough, I guess. So we say, as the as the brother said, you know that uh, you know nobody will have influence on him or on his mission, but but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, no one will have you know credit for the upbringing of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala was the educator of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, murabbi for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and as the brother said, also to develop a high level of of determination. Taib. Um, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this part is working as a shepherd. And we talked about this in the beginning of our classes about being a shepherd. Inshallah, we'll move on and we'll say how, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the early years of his life. And there are so many things, you know, were written about that in the, in the books of the seerah. And as, as I said, you know, I want to just to, to stick to the, to the authentic and accurate uh, narration. But one of these uh, one of these things that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did before Islam and how Allah subhanahu wa taala protected him before Islam is that one time one time uh, he said to Khadija by Allah I never worship Allah wal Uzza by Allah I never worship Allah wal Uzza and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and somebody whose name is Zaid ibn Amr ibn Nufayl they wouldn't even eat the, the meat of the animals that were slaughtered by other than the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hadith narrated by ha uh, Zaid ibn Haritha he was the, the, the servant of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam during, during that time that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw him one time he was uh, close to Isaf and Naila and Isaf and Naila are names of the idols some of the idols that the people in Quraysh used to worship. And people used to just make tawaf around them, and when they get close to them, they just, they just yeah, wipe their hands in, in them. And then Rasulullah wasallam saw Zaid, and he says, don't ever touch him. Don't ever touch him. And that was even before Islam. That was before the revelation of Rasulullah And then Zaid said one time, he thought about just, you know, just... I'm going to just touch and see what's going to happen. And he touched them. And Rasulullah saw him and said, Haven't I forbidden you for doing that? And that's why Zayd ibn Haritha, he never worshipped an idol. Neither Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because both they were brought up in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never worshipped an idol, never swore by an idol, never ate an, an, any meat of an animal that was slaughtered in the name of these idols. One time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I was a shepherd, and one time as I, was, I was having this man with me, a young shepherd, and I, there was a party going on in town. And I asked him, let me just go and, and, and attend this party. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he said when he got closer uh, to the house, he said, well, I heard singing and a striking of the, the foof, the drums. And then he said, I asked, what is this? They said, well, such and such man is getting, to, is getting married to such and such, and such woman. And it was a man from Christ getting married to a woman from Christ. And so I, I amused myself for a little bit with that singing, with those uh, sounds, until sleep overcome me overcame me. And then he said, and the only thing that woke me up was the heat of the sun. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't let him listen, uh, uh, hear and all this, you know, all this music and all this. And the parties, usually parties, they just like, they get really intense toward the, towards the end of it. 
You know, people sometimes when the party is, is over by maybe 12 o'clock or maybe 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, they want to stay awake. They want to just like continue until the, until the morning. And they will take it to their houses. And then I start like maybe smoking weed or maybe they having like, you know, a lawful, you know, relationship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to sleep. And he said that the, 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 the next thing I, I know is that the, the sun, the heat of the sun, is beating down him, and then he woke up. And the following day, he said the same thing to this man. And then he went to attend another party. And what happened? Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to sleep. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even before his, his risala. And this is just like, you know, it, it will, I need the idea of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wanting to go to a party, wanting to listen to these things. It's just, it just a sign, an indication that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam possessed a, 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 the main characteristic of any human being. Just like just any young man, you know. Like just any young man, you just wanted to have a little bit of fun, you know. Tayyip. Um, we'll move on and we'll go to uh, uh, Bahir al Rahib, the monk who meets the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu wa Abu Talib was, as we said, he was the caretaker of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu wa he used to travel often to Asham for business, and some, some, sometimes he would travel also elsewhere for business purposes. And one time he took the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wa with him to a trip to Asham. And when the caravan got closer to, to a deer or like a, a church, you know, a monk, his name was Bahira, he came out. And they said it was really surprising because this man, every time they used to get to Sham, they used to pass him. And this man never came out. But this time he came out. And he looked at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he took the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the hand. And he said to the, to, 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 to the people of Quraysh or the people who came with them, he said, this is the chief of al alamin This is the chief of all mankind, the jinn and the human. This is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa This is the messenger of the Lord of all that exists. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send him as mercy to all that exists. And the people in Quraysh said, how do you know that he's a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Listen to what he said. He said, when, when you, uh, he said, uh, when you overlook this place as you were arriving from Aqaba, every single tree and stone in the area fell down in prostration. And they don't perform prostration for anybody but a prophet. And indeed, I know him from also the seal of his prophethood. So he recognized the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right away. And this is also another indication that the people of the book, some of them are truthful. Some of them are sincere. Some of them actually say the truth. Not, not only in the past, some nowadays actually, they believe that the messenger of Allah, and I met people like that. I met people, I met people, I met actually priests and rabbis who believe that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a, is a true prophet. That he's a true prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the thing is that they say it's not for us. Yes, he is, maybe he's a true prophet. You know, you do have principles and values and this and that. But he, he, he's not the one we're waiting for. You know, he's not sent to us. Right. So anyways, Bahira, he, he, was, he was worried about Rasulullah and he insists for, insists to, for them to take the messenger of Allah back. And... Um, because he, he, he knew that the Roman were, 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 were looking for the last prophet. And Roman wanted to kill the awaited messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they have also like in their, in their scriptures how he is going to come and, and, and free all this region from the invasion of the Roman. So they wanted to get rid of him when he was a child. And while they were talking, when Bahira was talking to Abu Talib and the rest of the caravan, he turned it around and they said he, that he saw seven Romans approaching. He went to them and they asked him what they wanted. They said, news have, ha, has reached us that the awaited prophet is coming out during this month. And every road has been blocked with guards. And we were sent to watch over this road. Bahira said to them, suppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants a matter to happen. Will you be able to stop it? They said, no. 
And he says, well, this is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be good to him. So, and Bahira, he insisted also for Abu Talib to take his, to take his son back or to take the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back and protect him from, from the Romans. Um, if you look here, we see a lot of, also a lot of lessons that she learned from Bahira al-Rahib. One of them, as I said, you know, some of the, some of the people of, 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 of the book are sincere and truthful. Also, the, 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 uh, the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this man said, you know, I've seen trees and rocks making prostration, you know. And then he also said that he saw a ghamama, like a cloud giving shade to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and these are signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, to be a prophet. And there is a hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is a rock in Mecca. He used to, every time I used to pass by this rock, he used to send salams to me. Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Before his prophethood. He has so many mu'ajizat in Aqana. Mu'ajiza is something that performed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hands of a prophet or a messenger. And even a prophet and a messenger had that. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a requirement from the people whom this prophet is sent to. Because if, you, if somebody comes to you and says, well, I've seen this, or I'm doing that, I'm doing the other, you ask, what is your proof? Show me a proof. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Nuh. They ask for a proof. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, all these prophets, said Musa and Isa, and people ask for a proof. Give us a proof that you're a prophet. And it's understandable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported his prophets with, with miracles. We say that the Quran is the miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because all the miracles of the prophets died with them, except the miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which is the Quran. It's the miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed so, so many miracles. One of them was Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu. You know, during the, the battle of Al-Khandaq, when they were starving, they were really hungry. And then Jabir, he said, I looked at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's face, and he looked very pale. And then I went back home, and I told my wife, do you have any food? She said, yes, enough for three people. And then I went to the Messenger of Allah, and said, Ya Rasulullah, I have some food, if you can bring to you with you, and let us go home and have a meal. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, okay, well, go to your wife and tell her, don't touch anything until I come. And then they, the man, he went to his wife and Rasulullah has brought the whole army you know, to, to the house of Jabir. But see what his wife said. He told her, Rasulullah is coming with the army. And she said, did you tell him how much food do we have? He said, yes. She said, well, he knows what he's doing. He said, are you crazy? Yeah. No, she said, he knows what he's doing. And then Rasulullah said, Fumi the Mu'ajiza, right there, and everybody ate. And Jabir said, after everybody ate and everybody left, the food was still the same. And Rasulullah actually performs a, like a few miracles with Jabir ibn Abdullah. And he used to love Jabir ibn Abdullah because of his father. He used to love his father. He was one of the shuhada of Uhud. You know. And Rasulullah one time also with Jabir that, that Allah, uh, his father died and he left nine uh, sisters. You know, and he used to take care of them. And one time that he was in debt, and people, you know, the creditor, they came to, to, to demand their money. And then he went to complain to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Rasul, I don't have any. You know, I have my garden, and the, the days that I have in my garden is not enough to pay off my debt. Then Rasulullah ﷺ said, and he said, could you talk to them? And Rasulullah ﷺ says to him, when the time of harvest comes, don't touch anything. Just let me, let me see it first. And Rasulullah went to the garden and he said to Jabir, put the rye once on the side and the dried once on the side. And all the creditors came and Rasulullah gave them their, their, he paid off their, their debts. He paid off Jabir's debt. And everybody took his money and Jabir says, Oh Wallahi, I looked, I looked and the days were still the same. It was still the same. Another miracle that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with Jabir during the Ghazwat Dhat al when they were coming back. They were coming back to Medina and then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Jabir at the end of the army and he ran to him and said, Yeah, Jabir, what's going on with you? He said, My camel is old and you know. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inzil anha ya Jabir, kneel it down. And he poked it a few times. And he says, Wallahi, the moment that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam poked it, Start running and racing the, the camel of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had this amazing, civilized 
incredible conversation with this young man. He says, Are you married, Jabir? He says, Naam, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Abikrun hi am thayyib. He says, Thayyiban, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Why didn't you marry Bikr? Tula'ibuha wa tula'ibuk. And then he says, Ya Rasulullah, my father died and he left, you know, nine, girl, nine sisters for me. And I didn't, I didn't want to marry someone in their age that might, you know, cause problems between them. So I wanted to get a woman that she had experience in life, that she will teach him about life. And then Rasulullah said to him, Ahsan Tajat. Ahsan. Well done, O Jad. And then Rasulullah wanted to help this man. Because now the man is in distress. He has nine girls, you know, had all these dads, and you know, he's married to. And so Rasulullah wanted to help him financially. And then he said, How much would you sell this camel for? And then he says, Here, look at Rasulullah, it's yours, take it. And they said, you know, tire camels all maybe 30 dinars, 30. And then Rasulullah says, uh, I'll give you one dinar. And then he said, One dinar is not going to do it. Yeah, Rasulullah, take it. It's a hadiyah. It's a gift for you. Take it. And Rasulullah said, But I'll give you one dinar. But when we arrive to Medina, I will stop the whole army and we'll send somebody to tell your wife that you arrived. So that she will fix the bad for you. The mattock, the mattock is like the, the cushion or the pillows. You know what he said? He said, Ya Rasulullah, Laysa andana na mattock. O Messenger of Allah, we don't have pillows. I mean, we were so simple. I mean, we don't even have pillows. Can you imagine a Sahabi, a man like Jabir, that his father was one of the shuhada of Uhud? You know, a man whom Rasulullah loves so much. He doesn't even have pillows in his house. You know, nowadays we're so, you know, so uh, spoiled, man. Just go and get all these mattresses, the foam mattresses, primatic whatever, you know, gee, numbers bad that you have to, you know, sleep in one side and your wife sleeps in the other side, you know? So that when you turn around, you don't disturb one another. And subhanAllah. It's incredible. Incredible. He says, Ya Rasulullah, we don't have pillows. Rasulullah didn't know what to say. But he stopped the whole army. When they arrived, when they come closer to Medina, he stopped the whole army and he sent somebody to tell Jabber's wife, your wife, your husband is here. And you know when when a when a when a man when 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 a man is away, you know the wife. Some of the wife they they don't really take care of themselves. Yeah, my husband is away. Why would I do this? Why put a nice dress on or do this or do that? You know. But people before they used to just show up. You know, right? People used to show up. You know, when I was a little kid, my father used to 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 travel. My brother used to travel. Go to Iraq. Go here. Go there. In like during his uh, uh, summer uh, break to just work and gain some money, and then he would just show up anytime because we didn't have telephone. The only one who has a telephone in town was actually the mayor. <laughs> and in Friday, you go there, you go to the mayor's house. People, the whole town is just standing in lights, waiting, yeah, waiting for you know so and so in Saudi or in Kuwait or in Iraq is calling me. You know I gotta wait. You know and call us at three o'clock because we have like five or ten people ahead of us. Subhanallah. That is like that. That's not in the twenties. That's like in the early nineties, late eighties, early nineties. Really, right? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know the husband is away and she she needs to take care of herself and just like welcoming her husband. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he went home and he went to, to, to take a nap and he woke up and he found the camel, that camel that he bought from Jabba right at the door. And he said, whose camel is it? They said, Ya Rasulullah, Jabba brought it. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called Bilal. And he says, Ya Bilal, take this money and take the camel. Take his 300 and take the camel and go to Jabir ibn Abdullah and tell him, the money is yours, the camel is yours. Your father was, a, was, was as a brother to me. 
So the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is an incredible civilized conversation that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had with this young. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed with so many miracles, so many miracles. So this is one of the things also that we learn from the from the story of. Uh, I mean, think about the jiza. You know the piece of trunk that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to hold when he used to give a khutbah. You know, and there is so many narration about this, about the voice, the sound that this piece of, piece of tree made when Rasulullah SAW gave it up after they built Rasulullah SAW a little pulpit. And Rasulullah SAW says, well, We heard it screaming like a baby. And so Rasulullah SAW held it and he says, Would you, Does it please you to be with me in paradise? For a second. And the sound stopped. Immediately stopped. That's a mu'jiza from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I said, I don't want to go over, you know, 30 minutes. You know, I want to stick to my word. It's already 35 minutes. So inshallah, we'll continue next time. And if you can read about uh, Al-Fujjar, Harb Al-Fujjar and, and, and Hilf Al-Fudul, that'll be great. Because we're going to go also around the room and ask about Hilf Al-Fudul. Because it's an incredible event as well. Jazakumullah khairan, subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma asafoon. Wassalamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.